The side control is here. And so I grapple a lot with this grip. I'm under his armpit. I hold the back of his collar with four fingers. I have my knee really up, like deep underneath his back. And I have my toes on the floor and I'm pushing him away. I'm kind of lifting him up and pushing him away. So this is my, this is actually, I consider this a, a side control position, not just uh, for submissions. And in fact, I like it so much that even Nogi, which killed like this, even Nogi, I, I still grapple here. I hold this arm and I control the face here. So it's uh, great for setups, uh, for attacking. Uh, it keeps him from being able to do what he's supposed to do is turn into me, right? So this is a really good way to control the person and for, you know, if, if you're like doing self-defense or MMA, you can really, you can strike here. Uh, you're not tied up by being laid, by laying down on top of the person. Look, like here, I'm actually up. Uh, for people in law enforcement, you can handcuff here, you can see everything. Uh, so I, I love this position. I, I've learned, I, I began learning Jiu-Jitsu as a kid, uh, five years old, the traditional Jiu-Jitsu for self-defense. So self-defense has always been super important to me. Uh, with clothes on, right, in a self-defense scenario, you have the same grip. Uh, I kind of have a rule in self-defense, uh, no clothes, no fight. Like, so if I don't fight naked, crazy people. So I always have, if I don't have a gi on, I always have clothes to grab. So I like, I like to be able to control this. Um, so my choke that I do from here is uh, the paper cutter. Some of you guys may have seen it before. So I just urge you, if you have seen it before, I'm not saying my way's better. It just is different. So at least try it the way I'm gonna show you tonight, because it is different. Uh, so again, I'm turning him away, this knee's in deep. I'm, uh, I'm gonna use my head to control his face, and this keeps him from turning towards me, which is super important because I'm choking this carotid artery. The more he turns towards me, right, the more he's hiding that carotid artery. So it's really important to turn him away. So I use this control, turn him away, and then instead of trying to come down and grab this collar, I'm gonna come underneath my chin and grab my thumb in like this. It would be very easy right now just to crank down on his throat and try to suffocate him, but I'm gonna be going right across his airway and he's gonna freak out and go crazy and, and probably escape out of panic, right? Uh, it's be like trying to drown a silverback gorilla, like trying to choke somebody with a windpipe right here. He's gonna go nuts. So I wanna be off his windpipe a little bit and I wanna pull that gi across his neck, bring my elbow to the floor and I'm gonna open my elbow, hide my head inside here and Hit that carotid artery. It's almost like I'm trying to wring it out from his collarbone to his ear. Like I'm trying to shoot blood out of his ear through his carotid artery. I'm scraping that carotid like that. One of the details I didn't show just now, but it's, it's super important. When uh, people are doing this choke, they always end up on top of the person, like high up here and trying to choke him here, uh, which is fine unless he's defending, right? He grabs my collar, almost the same position. Now he's framing against me. He's able to frame and get away, right? So I want to I want to be able to get off of the top of him. So this foot, I'm just gonna take a back step. It's gonna change the angle. And now when I go down, I hide my head here. He can't reach the fin. I'm still able to lift him up. And I get that elbow to the floor and I open my elbow. I drive from my feet through my hips into my head, right into that arm. And again, I'm gonna wring out that carotid artery right here. So he's gonna walk to take off pressure. And I'm just gonna go to shuffle. And eventually, if we keep walking, he's going to lose that battle every time. Uh, a couple of things that you might have seen taught before, and again, it's none of it's wrong. It's just different. Is a lot of people go low like this. They lay in their belly, and they hit the flat, and they try to choke like this. I can't move as fast as like this uh, to keep the pressure on. I can't use, I'm using more of my arm instead of my weight to put pressure. And additionally, I'm, I'm limiting myself to this being my only submission. There's no follow-up attacks if I can't get it. So I always like to attack in sequences, like chain submission attacks. And so this kind of takes away the follow-up moves we're gonna do. So that's why I'm kind of urging you guys to get on this knee, push him away. I'm mobile on my feet. My feet are very mobile like this. I wanna be on my toes. Take that step back, drop the elbow, get your head to drive. And again, one of the best things about this is he can't really defend. So, because of the fact that my head's not over him. So, to set this up, I'm gonna be in side control, right? I'm gonna go to north south, and we're gonna have his arms gonna, usually his arms gonna come up to defend or grab, whichever way they come. I'm just gonna go under an armpit, four fingers in, I'm gonna come back. That's, there's lots of setups for this, that's how I set it up. Get him here, 
control them with the, your head. This is like my fifth limb. That's the cross face. Thumb in, step back, drop the elbow, open the elbow, drive with my head, and start walking. Be careful that you don't open this up. You can palm this arm out. Keep this space close. If he gets this arm out, he can defend. Right. Sure. Any questions with that? Right, that's a paper choke, my version of it, at least. One, three. One, two, three. <laughs>